welcome back to my channel, the place to be if you would like a better night's sleep and a healthier and happier family all round. This episode is all about infant sleep and crying and particularly focusing on the responding that comes with that. So stick around, I have three key takeaways to share with you today and to help you with exactly that. Right, so let's delve in. First thing I want to share with you is an understanding of the difference between responding versus ignoring. Responding is when a response comes. It's whether that be uh, responding with soothing, responding with an answer, responding with comfort, responding with a nappy change or, a, or with milk or whatever it might be. It's a response. It means that your little one has a response and it might not be a response they the, that they wanted it might not be the exact response that they were looking for but it is a response so you are there you are present there's pretty much that's the, the the minimum requirement of a response is that you come and show that you are present ignoring is when you don't and it, it literally is that it's just ignoring it's like i can hear that crying and i'm not i'm not doing anything about it I'm just just gonna ignore it and hope that it stops in a nutshell and that's the difference between responding versus ignoring. Now, the thing I think uh, that's mm, that, that kind of muddies the water and that can confuse people is the length of time it takes for a response to come. Does a slow response mean ignoring or is it just a bit of a delayed response? So sometimes you might be tied up with another child, a sibling, um, and one is crying and you're like yep okay right I'll be right there or you might have a baby napping and they're sleeping peacefully so you take the opportunity to go to the bathroom and then oh gosh baby's crying and you're like okay right I'll, I'll, I'll be right there and you just have to finish up and get over there it, sometimes there are things that delay your ability to respond you don't have to respond instantly for it to still count as, as a response when the response comes if you don't respond for a prolonged amount of time, and I'm talking, you know, half an hour or more, then I think we'd be like, you know, then you're starting to get to the point of, yeah, that's just ignoring. But minutes are fine. Anyone can wait minutes for a response. And actually, it's good too. It's good practice. Anybody can wait that length of time. Once that response comes, then everything's calmed down anyway. Okay, the second thing I want to share with you is the response that you bring is it ideally needs to be one that best suits the child's personality and you. So it needs to be aligned, it needs to match. Um, now there can be loads of different responses of course, you can respond to a dirty nappy, a need for food, a need for comfort, in all kinds of different ways, a response to pain is going to be different again. Um, but when you're responding uh, to just, I don't know, just almost like, um, for instance, with a wake up in the night, that response needs to suit that child. So some little ones respond better or receive a response of lots of comfort and physical touch um, and really knowing you're there. They, some little ones res uh, re prefer that kind of response. They do better with that kind of response others do better with the less is more and actually they're like okay yeah that's cool that's fine they're e they're more easily calmed so for some just going it's okay i'm right here it's going to calm them whereas for others it's like hey 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 i'm right here and they need the full-on touch and cuddle and everything and that's that's just personality differences and that happens and we're the same um the third thing you need to consider is once you know what response does best suit your child and that you feel comfortable delivering and you've got that all aligned is to then be consistent with it. So every time you get that particular outcry, be this you know, night wakings, which is the one that we're most commonly talking about here, is the, the they've settled to sleep, okay, they've woken up, okay, we're calm, we've woken up again, okay, and we've got another waking is to be consistent every single time that they get that same response. They get used to it then, they come to expect it, and they come to respect it, and they are calm and they are happy, 
even if it's not just if it's not just the exact response that they wanted they are reassured and they are responded to which means you are miles away from any any kinds of fears or distresses um, senses of abandonment you know then, then none of that's happening because you are responding so getting really clear on what responding actually is and how it looks and what works and doesn't work for your child is really going to help you they are all different like i said there is no perfect response that suits everybody there just isn't and what completely appeases one child will really annoy another and so it's really good to get to know what that looks like and then you will be absolutely fine so when those cries come know what your response is going to be and be consistent with it Coming up in the next episode, I'm going to be sharing some misconceptions and facts and helping you understand crying in a whole nother level. See you there. Thanks so much for watching. If you've liked anything about this episode, then please leave a comment below and hit subscribe for more episodes like this. If any of your friends would benefit from seeing this video, then please do share it with them using the hashtag the sleep nanny. And we look forward to seeing you again real soon.